Hey guys, uh, I don't usually do videos like this. Um, I've never actually done a proper screen recording video before, so no idea how this is going to turn out, so just bear with me. Uh, frames per second may be a bit low. Uh, my computer struggles with, uh, struggles with this anyway, let alone recording the screen at the same time. So uh, what I've got here is this is a Minecraft Feed the Beast. Um, I wanted to show you something I've made uh, I've posted a tutorial for this on the Computer Craft forums, which I'll link in the video description uh, if you want to have a go at this yourself. Uh, but what I did is I made an automatic fireworks factory. Um, now, if you've played Feed the Beast before, you'll probably know there is a block that can do this. Just, uh, what am I doing? Fireworks. There's a block that can do this. I think it's part of Computer Craft, or maybe it's the, um, yeah, I forget what the other mod's called, but it might be part of that as well. Um, with this block, you basically just pump all the ingredients you want into it, and then using a computer, you can tell it to make the firework, and then well, it just automatically launches it. So if you wanted to make the firework and then launch it yourself, you can't with that block. It just launches them as soon as it makes them. Um, I also don't really like it because it is a bit cheaty. Uh, normal fireworks do require paper, whereas this thing doesn't. Uh, so that end, I'd already built this before I realised that block existed. So there's a bit of a derp in that way, but I do find it a bit cheaty. Uh, so what I've got over here is the system for producing the dyes and such for the fireworks. Uh, the water's a bit glitchy here. Yeah, I'm not sure what the go with the water is. It does seem to do that every now and then. Yeah, that might just be lag. But anyway, uh, this is the first flower farm I built, and it ended up being way too small. I mean, it only gets you know a couple flowers at a time. And basically, there's a deployer under here that just puts bone meal on the grass, and then a dispenser on a timer washes it down. Um, all these crafting ta auto crafting tables here, they just convert the flowers into dyes. And then you can see there's bone mill coming along here to just refill the deployers. Um, this is the sugarcane farm for the paper. Uh, so this has just got its own little solar array here. Uh, which is, All this stuff is set up so it only runs when, it needed, when it's needed. So obviously it's got enough paper and it's not running. Uh, there's also a furnace in here which converts the cactus to green dye. And that just comes from a pretty typical cactus farm. This isn't anything special. You can actually make these in vanilla. Uh, the only thing special is that there's an obsidian pipe here to collect the drops. Um, and over here is the much bigger version of the flower farm. Uh, so as you can see, it gets a lot more flowers. For some reason, they seem to get stuck in these corners. Uh, I'm not quite sure why or how to fix that, but majority of them end up in the pipes anyway. Um, one interesting thing about this though is the dispensers sometimes go out of sync as in they'd end up firing before the deployers uh, so I worked out that this timer here actually lies between like directly between two separate chunks so if one of these chunks only one of the chunks loaded the timer would run and trigger the dispensers but the rest of this wouldn't trigger so they'd end up triggering at the wrong times uh, so what I did is just ran some uh, red alloy wire across the whole length of the farm. And basically, if the chunk isn't loaded, this redstone won't be on. So it won't allow the timer to run. So there's just an AND gate there. Uh, so there, that produces all the flowers and sugar cane and dyes and stuff for the factory. Um, I'll show inside the factory in a minute, but I just want to show you what's actually creating all the stuff to use it. Uh, so if we drop down here, uh, we have mob grinders. Uh, these are using the soul shard spawners, I believe. So you've just got a bunch of spawners up here. And once again, they're all just redstone controlled, so they activate when needed. So at the moment, it's uh, spawning endermen, so I must have left that on. But yeah, it'll spawn uh, skeletons for bones for bone meal, uh, creepers for gunpowder and zombie pigmen for uh, gold nuggets um, and then yeah, there's all the controls in here but it's also controlled from the factory directly 
and then we've got our blaze grinder over here. Uh, so all this just goes into ender chests. We've got bones in here, gunpowder, gold nuggets. Uh, so if we go back upstairs, yeah. once you get a jetpack, you tend to just oh hello, <laughs> you tend to just put holes in floors and just fly up them constantly. Even if you do put ladders in the start, you just don't end up using them once you've got a jetpack. It's just so much easier. Uh, so in here is where it all happens. Uh, so yeah, basically what we've got is all the items coming through here, like the gunpowder, uh, not the gunpowder, the flowers and the sugar canes. Sugar canes go in here, they get crafted into paper, go into this chest. Uh, there's a gate behind this here, and that goes up to the uh, sugarcane farm motor. So when that turns off, it'll run. And then this is just sent to uh, set to mid redstone if the inventory is full. And then on these chests we have filters, and with the right amount of items in for each. So in this one we've got 16 paper, and then we over here we've got all our dyes. So purple, 16 purple, and light blue, 16 light blue, orange, yellow, red, green. Um, for some reason there is this indigo dye that's meant to work as a lapis replacement but for some reason it doesn't work in fireworks so I'm just converting it to light blue instead uh, so all these pneumatic tubes are just connected to each other um, for something like this they're much easier to use than build craft pipes because they're smart like items won't come down here and then just bounce down here and bounce back up the items will come out and they know exactly where to go um, so you've got the gold nuggets and the gunpowder, all their filters, and all these are on wireless redstone. Um, yeah, I'll show you why in a bit. Uh, originally I did this with two turtles, I had another turtle here, and that turtle would get all the firework star ingredients, and then that turtle would craft the star, pass it on to this turtle, and this turtle would craft the rocket. Uh, but someone on the forum suggested that uh, this uh, interactive sorter here. Uh, this this thing is great. It's um, turtles themselves don't have a way of checking item IDs of items in their inventory, so you have to use these interactive sorters, um, which still can't really. I don't think they can get item IDs inside the turtle, but what they can do is you can set the turtle up so it'll extract these items, um, so you can tell it which item ID to extract. Um, the way it does this is really it's kind of weird, so as you can see on the orange die, it's got a data value of 351, but then it's got another data value there of 14. Uh, so when you tell the turtle to pull the item, it actually takes in account the uh, second number there, which is multiplied by some other random, I suppose, random value. Um, so that's a bit of a pain to set up, but once it's done, it's done. Uh, so what I'll do is grab one of these gunpowders because I took one out before. Um, what this basically does is it keeps a buffer of all the items it could possibly need for a stack of fireworks in this chest. Um, you could use just pump all these pipes directly into the turtle, uh, but then when you tell it to craft, it has to send all the items through the filters and then into the turtle and then you have to do them sequentially as well so you'd have to send all the star ingredients wait a bit and then send the paper wait a bit then send the gunpowder wait a bit uh, this way it all just goes into here and it's already waiting there for the turtle and he just pulls it out and puts it into the grid crafts that pulls it out and then spits them out the front here uh, so you can see we've already got a fair few here let's chuck these in um, so yeah, that's all that is. Uh, this back here is just a chest where I can dump, you know, dyes and stuff back in, and they'll go back into the system. Um, so we go up here. Once again, I've just got a hole in the floor to get through. Uh, so up here we've got some more effects. So we've got fire charges with their own filters. We've also got diamonds and glowstone dust. And to go up the next floor. And this is where all the control stuff happens. It's just this computer here. Um, it's attached to bundled cables, which in turn have all these different uh, colored insulated wires coming off them into the wireless transmitters. 
and these go to all like the various filters that I showed just before. Uh, this over here, this is just this crafts the uh, fire charges. So I've got the fire charge recipe here in an auto crafting table. I've got coal above it, blaze powder behind it, uh, macerator here that turns the blaze rods into blaze powder, and gunpowder over the back here. Um, so where I get all this stuff from is and find the way in. Uh, over in my main house I have a mass fabricator so that's generating this UU matter stuff here and that's basically just shared between all these as it's needed so this one will make coal, this one will make glowstone, this one makes diamonds and these gates um, when the chests are empty these will come on and tell the uh, gates to pull items out so the chests just keep themselves full all the time um, this one here, the glowstone just goes straight into a macerator and turns into glowstone dust and then that's pumped out as usual. Uh, this was just an experiment, it's not really part of anything. Um, so yeah, if we go down here, uh, what we'll do... Exit this. Uh, the program, you can name it whatever you want, I've posted the code in the tutorial as you'll find. Um, but how it goes is you basically do the program name as you normally would to run a program but then after that you specify the amount of fireworks you want up to a stack of 64 but it has to be a multiple of what you've put in the filters and also in the code so if you look in the code uh, in here you'll see multiple equals 16 so this is how many you should have in all of your filters and this is what will allow you to craft so this is there's a basic check down here somewhere that yeah, it's a fair way down. Uh, you'll notice at the top here you can specify the wire colors for the bundled cables for the um, all the different colors and the effects. Uh, changing the color names and stuff themselves is a bit bit more annoying. You have to actually use the uh, if statements here. Uh, reason for that is is because the this computer actually sends these names wirelessly to the other turtle. Uh, so if you exit this, this turtle down here, it needs to know what actual items you want. So you can see the last run I did. These are all the items that I actually added to the firework. Uh, so it knows what to pull out of this chest. Um, so if we go back up here, go to this computer, firework, go to 64. Now I don't know how well I'm going to be able to catch this because it does go really quickly. I will do all the colors, yellow, green, purple, spell purple, orange, light blue. I think that's it. And then we'll add a couple effects as well. So large ball. So that'll add fire charges and then we go, I don't know, twinkle as well. Okay. So now you have to be quick. So do this tells you a bit of information. Go down here to the turtle. You can see I'm pulling the items in, moving them into the grid, crafts them, pull the item in, crafts them, done. So that takes about, I think it's less than 10 seconds from hitting go on the computer up there to having your fireworks done. So as you can see, the flight duration I specified was three, and it's got all the colors and large ball and the twinkle effect. So that's basically all there is to it. So then this would automatically pipe them off to dispensers scattered around the place. Yeah, it's kind of fun to play with. I mean, you, there's so many different firework combinations. Um, I mean, you could have all the dyes, all the different effects. Um, of course, you can only have eight in any one star because there's only there's nine slots plus you need one for gunpowder all the time. So there's eight slots for effects and dyes. Uh, what I'm going to work on doing is you can have multiple stars per firework, so might work on trying to get it to do that as well. But yeah, as you can see, what, after it had crafted that, all the items to fill this chest were coming back up. So you see this chest is filled up again, ready to go. So yeah, that's what I wanted to show. I just wanted to clear a few things up because I did make a tutorial for this uh, on the computer craft forums, but. I think some of the details are sort of a bit hard to explain in text. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, that's what I've done. Um, 
as I said, I don't know how this video is going to turn out. It's the first time I've done it, and I'm recording the sound on my phone. So, yeah, see what happens, I guess. Thanks for watching.